It's called the integrated approach for failure mitigation and localizations in power systems. And uh, will be presented by Mr. Shane Liang. He's a PhD student in the Department of Computer and Mathematical Science at Caltech, California. He obtained his bachelor's degree in automation from Tsinghua University, China. His research interests focus on graph theory, optimization, control, and their application in power system. He's particularly interested in analyzing cascade failure and design robust control algorithms in response to failures. Mr. Liang, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, can you see the screen? Yep. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's my great honor to talk about our recent work, an integrated approach for failure mitigation and localization. Failures in power systems propagate them locally. As shown in this figure, the failure sequence of a real blackout in 1996, we see these successive failures happened hundreds of kilometers away from each other. And this non-local propagation makes it particularly challenging to predict analyze and control for the failures. The current industry practice relies on simulation-based contingency analysis, which is usually constrained by the computational power. There's also some literature using statistical models based on historical data, but the structural analysis of the cascading failure process is less studied. Conventionally, Redundant lines are believed to improve the system robustness since it enhances the connectivity during the cascading process uh, and provide alternative paths for the power to flow. However, how well does this strategy work? Is the redundancy really helpful? Can we design a controller that can autonomously respond to failures or disturbances? In this talk, we will introduce a novel approach to mitigate the failures based on novel top topology design for failure localization and a new control method for real-time response. Before we talk about the detailed design, let's first talk about our model that we consider. Uh, we use a widely used uh, DC model in the cascading failure literature which uh, where we describe failures in stages. At each stage, the power injection is adjusted based on certain balancing rule. And then the power of branch flow is solved by using these DC power flow equations. Then we check if the branch flow exceeds the line capacity or not, and we trip the overloaded lines at the next stage. For the balancing rule, there's actually a variety of these balancing rules but most common one is, is the following, that the power injection remains the same if the system is still connected. Otherwise, the nodes will proportionally adjust their injections to compensate the imbalance caused by the in, in eye landing. With this DC model, we can actually explain the non-locality for the failure propagations. Traditionally, Transmission grid is usually composed by several regions, which are operated relatively independently with prescribed power exchanges through these tie lines. If we cluster the region into a supernode and add an edge for each tie line connecting different regions, we can obtain the following reduced graph. A recent work has shown that uh, the failures will propagate globally with these redundant tie lines. However, when the reduced graph is a tree, the failures will be localized within the region itself. So this actually suggests a less intuitive and a bit controversial idea that we may switch off a small number of tie lines to reduce the redundancy network and improve the failure localization. But you may already see that the tie lines now become vulnerable in this DC model. In fact, there is actually fast time scale dynamics 
after the line failure. As we show here, the linearized frequency and flow deviations. In this dynamic model, at each stage, the system evolves following these dynamic equations, and we assume that it reaches the new steady state equilibrium at the end of each stage, just as shown in the red figure. This is a reasonable assumption since the line flows, uh, the line failures usually require some time for heat accumulation. Using this assumption allows us to directly compute the equilibrium point, uh, this one, from some optimization problem without simulating the whole dynamic process. For example, the post-conditioning equilibrium can be characterized by the following optimization problem when the droop control is adopted. And this equilibrium precisely recovers the above balancing rule. Therefore, we have the flexibility in the controller design and the corresponding balancing rule. So we may have a better failure mitigation approach with a better control method. Indeed, a recent frequency uh, control algorithm proposed also in PSCC called the Unified Controller can drive the system to the following uh, equilibrium. The first four constraints for the use Unified Controller is exactly the balancing rule when the automatic, uh, automatic generation control is adopted. Moreover, UC can also enforce the line limit. So compared with AGC, UC responds more actively to the failures so that all line flows are below the rating after the failure. So UC can fully stop the failure. I will not talk about the detailed design for the UC, but the main idea is that it derived from a projected primal dual axiom to solve the, the left optimization problem. And this can be implemented in a distributed uh, manner. So our pro proposed approach is to integrate the unified controller and the tree structure. For topology design, we propose to switch off a small number of timelines to create a tree structure at the regional level. This will help to localize the failures. After the topology design, we will implement the unified frequency control over those tree connected regions as a normal operation. And it will respond to disturbances in real time. Let's first look at the topology design. One question is that how to select a timeline to switch off as there could be multiple tree structures. To deal with this question, we propose to switch off uh, the timelines that with minimal impact to the network. Specifically, we will use this line congestion as a metric to quantify the impact of the switching actions, which is the largest ratio from the post-switching post flow to the line ratings. We can use this following optimization problem to find the optimal switching actions with minimal congestion, uh, uh, congestion for the post-switching system. One potential issue, however, for this problem is that the feasible set can be exponentially large with respect to the number of regions. To solve this, one heuristic is to recursively split uh, the, the network by only two regions. And this, is me this method is very efficient and accurate in our numerical results. Now, after the tree partition, uh, after the, uh, creating the tree structure, we implement the unified controller for a normal operation. When failure happens, it can be classified into two types, the severe failure and the non-severe failure based on the feasibility of the optimization problem. For non-severe failures where the optimization is feasible, the unified frequency control is guaranteed to stop the failure as all the post-contingency flows are below the rating. 
Moreover, it guarantees that there is no propagation to other regions. So the non-severe failure is fully stopped and localized. Severe failures means that the control capability in the system is not enough to support all its control objectives as shown as the constraints in this operator problem. But we can detect such invisibility in a distributed manner by looking at the dual variables like, like the control signals in the system. And further progressively relax the constraints until the optimization is feasible again. For example, we can relax the inter-area flow constraint to bring in more regions to participate in this mitigation process. We can also relax the bounds for the, for the controls to allow more load shedding or generation rescheduling. We want to emphasize this relaxation procedure can be designed very flexible. We can systematically uh, design this uh, relaxing procedure to priority, prioritize different objectives. So severe failures can also be stopped and managed. Now, we will show an illustrative demo for the dynamic response of our approach. Here, we use the IEEE 39 bus system. We classify the nodes into two areas, uh, and we switch off the blue lines to create a tree structure for these two areas. For non-severe failure, we can show the system evolves following the dynamic equation that we described earlier, and the system quickly converge to a safe equilibrium with line flows only changed in one region that are where the failure happens. For non-severe failure, we see that the system can quickly detect the invisibility. And then a relaxation uh, procedure is implemented and we can finally stop the failure by allowing more load shedding. We now provide a more comprehensive evaluation for our approach. Here, we test over four IEEE networks and choose three different factor of safety, which is a ratio for the line rating to the maximal uh, line flows, where the small safety factor indicates a more congested uh, network condition. We then iterate over all single line failures and simulate the failure process that's triggered under our proposed approach where we use implement the unified frequency control over the tree connecting network and the current industrial practice where the automatic generation control is implemented over the mesh connecting network. To quantify the performance, we use these two metrics. The first one is a, is a matter of the mitigation process. We call it the load loss rate, which is the ratio between the total load loss and the total demand pre for the pre-contingency network. The second metric is to quantify the localization performance, which is the uh, adjusted uh, generator ratio defined as the ratio between the number of gen adjusted generators to the total number of generators. Let's first take a look at the mitigation performance. In this table, we show the fraction of scenarios with non-zero load loss among all these simulated failure scenarios. There are three values in a cell co corresponding to three different uh, factors of safety. Um, in the first three networks, we see that our approach leads to fewer uh, scenarios with low loss. And this reduction is more significant when the system is congested. For 200 uh, bus network high, uh, 
for 200 bus network, we see that UC tends to lead more scenarios with low loss for large factor of safety effect, a factor of safety. Nevertheless, if you look at the average low loss, there is indeed a significant advantage for our approach, especially when the system is more congested. Let's look at the generation adjustment then. Similarly, we show the fraction of scenarios with non-zero generation adjustment. Again, for the first three networks, we see fewer scenarios with generation adjustment for a smaller FOS, uh, FOS, but there are more scenarios with a larger uh, factor of safety. For 200 buses, our approach leads to more scenarios with generation adjustment. But on average, if we compare the average uh, ge adjusted generation rate, we see UC tends to adjust fewer generators. So in summary, our approach responds more actively to adjust generators and loads, but more locally in response to failures. Even though the system congestion level isn't very high, our approach still actively adjusts to the generation or load so that you see more scenarios with generator adjustment, but, the, but our approach prevents load shedding in more failure scenarios, especially when the congestion level of the system is very high. And this uh, reduction is much more pronounced when the system becomes congested. With that, I would like to conclude my talk and I'm open to questions now. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. It doesn't seem that we have a question from the floor of the, or the audience. I do have a quick question. When uh, you simulate the IEEE test systems, uh, could, you, could you go back to that slide? Yeah. This one? No, no, the one before. Okay. It, it, it's a... Uh, the system is a is a static simulation, right? You don't have the machines dynamics included, or do you have? Uh, we we have a first order for the generators dynamics. Yeah, because I was wondering if you have the AGR, you should consider whether or not you have a thermal unit or a hydro unit or the kind of unit. It, it might affect the performance of the system, at least. Experience has shown that uh, depending on the, the type of generator, the level of the disturbance may, may be completely different. I see. In this model, we just use a, a, a relatively simple model for the generators, uh, just a first order, like uh, linear dynamics. Yeah, maybe you should consider a more, let's say, fancy generator model, just to see yeah. if you reach the same conclusions. I see, that's we a very another... interesting talk, question. Yeah, we can explore this further. <laughs> we have one question. It's uh, in page 14, you have the variation curves of dual variables. Can you specify which are those variables? Yeah, so the dual variables, uh, so th this is actually like, uh, I didn't talk about the detail for the controller design, but uh, um, Go back to this slide. Yes. This like this unified focusing controller um, is like a primal dual update algorithm for the, to solve this optimization problem. And the primal update is through this network itself, and the dual variables is solved in another like communication and control network. The dual variable is basically related to these uh, constraints, and in the simulations, we just uh, actively check the value for the dual variable to check whether there's infeasibility for the system. Thank you. Uh, I guess if there is no more questions, we could declare this session closed and I, for, before that I would like to 
thank all the presenters for very interesting work and uh, something that I hope that we'll see more in the future. I, let's hope that PSCC will be the first work on several topics. I wish you all well and I see you next time. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. So the session is now Thank closed. You. Thank you. Thank you.